has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. So uh, I got a, a bet uh, going on the uh, Rays right now, right? And they're in the bottom of the ninth at Rogers, and they got two on and one out, and Guerrero's up, and he's 2-2 against Fairbanks. And you just know uh, the doors are going to swing open here, don't you? You just you can feel it coming, right, that I'm going to bend over again? I mean, you can just feel it. I, I know at bottom of the ninth, two on, one out, and the best player on the team's up. Fouling balls off left and right. You know he's going to knock one out of the park. You can just feel it coming. I can see the confetti on my phone at any second now. It's going to be that confetti thing that rubs it in your face a little bit when yeah. the thing goes over the wall. You get the little confetti carver high. Yeah, you never like if you're on the other side when you see that confetti pop up when you're watching. Uh, he struck out. Home run. <laughs> Thank God. There you go. Fairbanks gets him. Uh, so that is, of course, game one. Two outs. A double header uh, up in Toronto. They'll play again tonight. Uh, more oh, no, NFL for up. you. Oh, no. But oh, shuts up with all of his home runs he's been hitting. He's even worse. He's even worse geez. to be up for me. I can't take it. Oh, I feel the big one coming on. My shoulder's getting numb, Carver High. Oh. He has been uh, on fire, uh, as they like to say. All right, TJ Watt, Scotty. Here's the latest. Doctors determined this afternoon that he does not – uh, need surgery on the torn pec, uh, and he is now expected to miss about six weeks uh, per source. So that is. I told you, God was weeks. a Steeler fan. He's and clearly God. not a Bronco fan. He's a Steeler fan. Not a Bronco fan. He's a Steeler fan. Also, Najee Harris, as we said yesterday, should be good to go against the Patriots this week. Uh, so we know that Najee, with the ankle, he's also had a foot issue. Uh, he looks like he's going to be good to go. Also, on the Patriots side of things, Scotty, sounds like Mac Jones is going to be good f- to go for them uh, at the place the Steelers play coming up on Sunday. He did not meet the media after the game against the Dolphins because he was getting that back looked at. So yesterday, he decided to say hi to everybody. As usually, he does not say much, uh, but he does say he'll be ready to go this week. Yeah, I think I'll be fine. I um... Like I said, the trainers looked at it and haven't had any issues with it before and don't expect any issues now. So everything's good. It's like that hostage video so, they got Mac in there. He's I really mean, a thriller to interview with. I, I mean, this guy. Like I said, they when they him? come to the team, when they come to the team, when you get drafted to the Patriots, Bill puts them all in the room. He puts the light right over their face and he lets them know this is how you're going to do interviews here in New England. Uh, absolutely boring, and you're not allowed to say anything of circumstance whatsoever. So, the Steelers and the Patriots at the place the Steelers play coming up on Sunday. Right now, Scotty, Patriots minus one road favorites into Pittsburgh. I'm looking at up to the second. How about that? Yeah, you know, I like the Steelers here. Uh, the way they played, I, but, you know, I could – It could go either way. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and act like Pittsburgh's got some uh, incredible team. You got to remember, Watt will not be playing, and we'll see what kind of pass rush they can get going uh, without him. They were all over Burrow. It wasn't just Watt. It was everybody. And everyone said their secondary sucked. Their secondary looked fantastic in that game in Cincinnati. And if they can get that going at home, and if – Najee's fine, and Trubisky can get a little better than he was. I thought he did enough to win the game in Cincinnati. That last drive, I said it yesterday, that pass to Fryermuth was clutch, and it got him in position to kick the winner. So you can say whatever you want. You said it best. He wins. He wins uh, for whatever reason, uh, and the Steeler defense, very good. On Sunday, we welcome in all of our radio affiliates. Sirius XM, Channel 159, Sports Map, Sports Byline. Good to have everybody aboard on a Tuesday. Let's hear from Jets head coach Robert Salas, Scotty. Here he is yesterday, uh, another guy going after the media for all of his problems. Uh, coach Salas is going to be, quote, taking receipts on those who are mocking the Jets, Whatever, Scotty. Here, 
whatever, here's, here's tough Robert guy. Sala. Here he All is. right, tough. When those those little errors that the offense was was having in the first half stop happening, it's going to be explosive, and then it carries on to the second half. You're you're just going to feel it, uh, and and in a way, it, it does just click where you're just stacking up day after day after day, and um, and it's really really cool when it does happen because it, it just absolutely pops off the tape, and uh, and I know it's going to happen. And I'm and I'm taking we're, we're all taking receipts on all the people who continually mock and and say that we ain't going to do anything. I'm taking receipts and I'm going to be more than happy to share them with all of y'all when it's all said and done. Listen, dude, no one cares what you think or say. You suck. You've done nothing and you still aren't doing anything. And people are going to continue to make fun of the Jets because they never get it done. They never do anything when they win a game. It's a miracle. Are you taking them this week that- against Cleveland? No. No, uh, I am not. Cleveland six point favorite too, Scotty. Cleveland minus six this week against the Jets. And listen, you can't say stuff like that when your team has been awful forever and you've never won anything and you can't do it in New York. That'll be the clip they play when he gets fired either this year or next year. The time that he was taking receipts for everybody. Uh, who was mocking the team. Calm down, dude. Yeah, who are all these people? He's just going to call it everybody. Everybody was out to get us. Everybody's to blame for this. Everybody's uh, said bad things about it. Like, it's the most ridiculous thing ever. Like, what he needs to do is get his team the ability to win a football game. Stop worrying about the media and everybody else. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers and The morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell and coast to BBG, coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game penguins. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, time. The PGA In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The morning after. A runaway win. A 21 and a half point favorite DRS. That's what Alabama was by the time we got to kick on Saturday afternoon in Austin. What stood out to you most about that game, DRS, between the Tide and the Longhorns? Texas should have won that football game, but that shows me a lot meaning. Sarkeesian has the ear of this football team. They weren't just going to take it on the chin. They didn't, even though they lost their star quarterback. I like what I saw from Texas. I did. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. If you would have told me the Texans scored 20 points through three quarters, if you would have told me the Colts scored 14 points in the fourth quarter, if you would have told me we got to overtime, I would have anticipated cashing some tickets. 20 to 20, this game finished. Matt Ryan stinks. He's overrated. This show told you that. Nobody else. Everybody else. Oh, Matt Ryan's going to change the whole identity of the Colts. No, he doesn't. Only on Sports Grid. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. Pharrell, coast to coast. The one that I'm worried about is Harris, because if they lose him, honestly, their offense is bad enough. Uh, You know, he was a 1,200-yard guy last year. They can't afford to lose Harris. 
That was a huge win. Minka was the defensive player of the week in the NFL with the pick six, Izzy, and the blocked extra point at the end of the game. Yeah, now Harris is more of an ankle than a foot injury, and they don't have good depth at running back. The kid Jalen Warren, the undrafted creation. The Sports Grid Network. All right, here we go, Carver High, with the uh, weekly Tom Brady retirement yes. tour. Uh, when is he going to retire? Those questions. I mean, honestly, well, these stale-ass media members with these questions, well, it just never ends. See, that's the thing. They ask him all the time. He doesn't really want to talk about it. Gives you some bland 25-second answer about it and says, move on with your day. But... If we get him on that Let's Go podcast with Jim Gray, he's going to open up about all kinds of topics, Scotty. Here's Tom telling Jim about it, but not the reporters who usually ask him. Often, often the case lately that, uh, you know, everyone <laughs> does. And I think for me, I just, a, uh, you know, I'm just going to take it day by day, you know, and, and I'll evaluate everything as it comes. So I know it's uh, one of these days they're going to be right. I will say that one of the days. You know, if you make enough predictions and so forth, and I think we've all kind of talked about the predictions that have not come true, but I think for me, you know, the ability to play and love what I'm doing in year 23 with a new group of teammates and, uh, you know, a really committed team, you know, it's really fun for me. (laughs) Stop already, honestly. It is just so, it's overkill. It's just the same thing thing every year now for like seven years it's just uh i'd rather have my wisdom teeth out again bucks are in new orleans this sunday uh they're gonna win minus two and a half road favorites of course uh they have not played well against the saints the last couple years since brady has been there but i don't care uh, we we see maybe a change for that coming this week first nfl win for dolphins head coach mike mcdaniel on Sunday over the Patriots, Scotty, uh, but not getting too hyped up. It's only one game, and you want your team to get better as the year goes on. Here's Coach. Theoretically, not not outcome oriented, but theoretically, that um, if we're we're on the journey that we want to be, that should be the worst game that we play all year. Um, that you should always be getting better, um, and that's not always measured with wins and losses, but. Uh, good the the best teams that um, you know if you if you want to be uh, a good team in this league you have to be playing your best football um, in the end of November and and December months so that's what we're gearing towards um, and we uh, there was um, definitely no celebrations or parties today uh, they I, I could tell that the 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 team knew they they there were some plays to be made on the field that we didn't make. Yeah, that's all very stale and full of shack to me. They played great, and they haven't looked that good in a, a long while. But look, they won nine in a row last year. How quickly we forget, right? So Brian Flores was doing a great job with the Dolphins, and then the whole deal started with uh, throwing games and uh, the owner's a racist and that was the end of him. And then they brought in this guy who's already got the uh, high ceiling on his forehead. My boy's going to be bald in about three years. So the deal is he's already stressing out. He's the only guy I know that I've ever seen in Miami wear a long sleeve yeah. hoodie every single day, every day on the job when everyone else is wearing no clothes at all. Golf shirts, T-shirts, tank tops, flip-flops. It's 90 degrees there. This guy's wearing hoodies. He's well, got to be sweating. He's, he's got to be got. He's got bologna slices going, and that's why he wears them, so no one can see he's sweating. Maybe he's got, like, the AC in the office cranked up, you know, no down way. to, like, 55, 60. Maybe he's just rocking the heavy no. AC uh, no. down there in Miami. No? Okay, well, they're going it's to the same thing as the Yankees. Sunday. Why does Aaron Boone wear a long-sleeved hoodie yeah. in the middle of August in the Bronx. It's 95 degrees yeah. with 105% humidity. And my bro rolls out every day with a long like, sleeve hoodie on. 
What are you doing, bro? Maybe a little uh, extra side workout. They're trying to gain, you know, cut a little bit more with the calories. You put a little bit more on. You now sweat they're fighters a bit cutting more. weight. Now maybe that's what Aaron and uh, McDaniel are doing. They're just trying to drop a couple of pounds uh, during the season since they can't work out as much. Dolphins are getting three and a half in Baltimore this coming Sunday. Remember they beat him last year, Scotty, on that Thursday night game uh, with Lamar Jackson. They ended up beating him. Uh, the defense played great that night. Might have been re very early in that nine-game winning streak, uh, but they do go on the road here, getting three and a half. Yeah, that game wasn't in Baltimore, and this one is. And uh, Maryland is for crabs. So I am telling you that uh, I'm on the Ravens. That's it. Like, uh, one I like more the Dolphins. From Mike. If they win that game, they got now, – now, if they win that game, then they're yes. starting to become a, a problem for the Bills that they're in the back seat. They're not in the car behind them. Well, they're in the back seat. Well, they'll get to get in the back seat with them right away because week three, the Bills are in Miami to take on the Dolphins right after that Ooh. Raven game. They Ooh. get their hands on the Buffalo Bills. So they'll Ooh. get an early test uh, to see if they are up for the defending AFC okay. East champs. One more for McDaniel here, Scotty. He has now shot himself to the top of the board for the coach of the year odds at BetMGM. How about this? Uh, plus 800 for Mike McDaniel. Kevin O'Connell of the Vikings up there as well. Brian Dable up there. Brandon Staley, everybody loves him. Sirianni, Nathaniel Hackett. I think we got to get him. Uh, get your boy Hackett uh, off that list there. Get Hackett out of there. The uh, yeah. Some of these other coach guys. Of the year, Hackett. Uh, <laughs> I think those two guys at the top, those are two guys that you are going to want to look for in this. McDaniel, O'Connell, new coaches, have a chance to maybe do some really big things this year. I like those two picks at the top. Those were my two sleeper teams this year, as you know, the Vikings and yep. the Dolphins from, uh, you know, what, early August uh, before camps even uh, started. I said that those are the two teams I thought would improve the most. I already thought the Dolphins were good, and I thought, and I told you that the Vikings would win the North and they would beat the Packers. Uh, I also wanted to give you Offensive Rookie of the Year because after the huge game from Jahan Dotson, of course, Scotty, he's now the favorite at plus 850, along with Pickens from the Steelers. Drake London, Olave in there. Uh, we lost Pickett. He's down to 14-1. to 1. They finally realized that Pickett can't win the award uh, when he's on the sidelines, so he slipped a little bit to 14-1. to 1. But Dotson was very impressive with Washington on Sunday. Yeah, and I, he's going to continue to get a lot of looks. Uh, I'm still on Pickens uh, because I have to be. It's a it's a tradition that goes runs deep, real deep. Well, he also plays at the place that the Steelers play, so right. that's another reason why uh, we like Pickens. MVP after one week, Josh Allen. Uh, you lost a little bit of uh, money on it. Hopefully, you put it in already because Allen now, Scotty, plus four fifty. Mahomes plus 550. Those are the guys at the top of the board there for the Lion. Uh, plus 750 for Herbert as well. Uh, Brady, Rogers, Burrow, et cetera, et cetera. This is Allen versus Mahomes, Scotty. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers, uh, fifth on the list with that great performance he had in Minneapolis. I mean, I'm sure the votes are just <laughs> cascading in for him for, you know, MVP for a third straight year with that great performance he had against the Vikings. I mean, come on. <laughs> Uh, honest I mean, to Christ, just move him off the list. And are we really going to go through another season of the Joker wins another one in basketball? No, no, we can't have that. We don't want that. Um, and also, just remember, Packers have a chance to get right this week because who does he always beat up on? The poor Bears. And you know they got to put that game in prime time. Sunday night, Packers-Bears. Everybody loves it. The old rivalry. Watch the Packers smash A lot of number there. Big number. A lot, of, not a lot of big number in that game, too. Bills, uh, last week, I believe, Scotty, before they kicked off, were plus 650. Now, plus 500 to win the Super Bowl. Tampa, the big mover on this board, the Eagles up to 14 to 1 and into the top five. <laughs> They got the Packers uh, fifth with there's, that uh, scintillating performance. <laughs> and uh, the Packers aren't winning anything with those rookies and those crappy receivers. Sorry. At Felix. least they took the Cowboys off the board. Uh, the Cowboys did drop off the big board this week, Scotty, uh, with that getting hurt. So we did say goodbye to them. I'm surprised they're not the favorites <laughs> with some of these odds you keep showing me.
Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. In the landscape of college sports, some things remain the same. College that football the today. Alabama in winning SEC champions. It's the island of misfit choice. Fantasy sports so, today. You have to understand that. $4 word. gap between them and Kansas City. Pro football now today. Years when this happened to this franchise, they are comical. Now, I'm not making light of the injuries. This is a brutal rash of In injuries. Game, line, but you can take the access. points. You can take the money line. And the sports book, if you shop around, you can get it at 133. But um, that's my best bet on the night, Joe. So that's the one I'm going big. In game live, prime time. I'm a bit nostalgic. I'm going with an international, Jason Day and Sergio Garcia. But boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge only on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Pharrell, coast to coast. There's a saying around coaches who run the National Football League when it comes to backup quarterbacks. The longer they play, the more they look like backups. Two, three, maybe four games you get away with it. But the longer they play, the more they look like backups. And the, the funny thing with the Cowboys, Pharrell, is they don't even have another quarterback on the roster. Dak will go into injured reserve. And then Cooper Rush will be the starter. And they're going to have to add at least one more quarterback, if not another. But th- this crushes them. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. All right, Justin Jefferson broke his uh, career record for receiving yards. He had over 150 for the Vikings at the half. This is why we tell you, just draft wide receivers earlier and figure it out at running back later. You know, take Jamal Williams and Corderell Patterson, because guess what? Look at look at all these names here at, at the top of wide receiver. Justin Jefferson, first-round pick. Cooper Cup, first-round pick. Devontae Adams, first-round pick. Jamar Chase, first-round pick. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. The Giants beat the Titans 21 to 20 with a late decision to go for two, three, and oh for the other three teams here in the NFC East. My question to you: Who had the most impressive Week One victory of this bunch? Thoroughly impressed by the New York Giants and going down double digits at the half. It looked like one of those games, Kevin, where we said to ourselves, "Man, Daniel Jones might not even." And I joked before the season, like he might get pulled, like only two. on Sports Grid. All right, Carver High, it's your favorite time of the day, uh, the lion's share, where we uh, continue to give out. Uh, you know, just constantly heaping money on the community in general as a whole, the citizenry, they need to fill their pockets. We're like Santa Claus stuffing stockings, same kind of thing. Just make them, you know, stacks of money, bands. Yes. And we, of course, no NFL tonight. So we can once again uh, focus squarely on baseball for the lion's share Brought to you by BetMGM. Let's do it with the strikeouts. A lot of aces on the mound for a Tuesday night, Scotty. In fact, a lot of guys that we like to normally go to. Let's start with Sandy Alcantara and the Marlins. The Fish have the Phillies coming to South Beach tonight. He faced them in his last start in Philadelphia. Had seven against them. The number's five and a half, minus 165 to the over, plus a buck 20 to the under. As you can tell, Scotty, over, under, over, under, over, under. Very back and forth the last six to eight starts for Alcantara. Did have the over last time against the Phillies. May squeeze the over again tonight being at home. Listen, uh, this guy at home has been unbelievable. Eight and three with a 1-6 ERA and 94 strikeouts. I'm on the over here, and I have a big piece on Sandy rocking uh, tonight over the Phillies. 
in the first five innings. I'm going for him for wow. the fat money early. And I think he's going to get those strikeouts uh, in the first five innings. I think his work's going to be fantastic early on. He's been dominant at home. Dominant at home, indeed. Next, we will go to the Mets and Jacob DeGrom again, Scotty. A high number for DeGrom tonight. He is facing the Cubbies, minus 155 to the over, plus 110 to the under. He has not been getting this for us when it's been 9.5. In fact, he's under 9.5 in his last four starts. A lot of 9s, a lot of 8s, but hasn't been reaching that double digits like he did five or six starts ago. I am going to the under tonight, Scotty. I think he falls just short again with the Cubbies. Another eight or nine, I think, for Jacob. Seems like every time we go for it, he finishes at nine. So I'll ride with you on the under at, at plus a buck ten. They don't want to give us any money, the hizzy. So that's probably where I'm leaning to. And they could use a big performance from him tonight, to be quite honest, the way that they've been messing around with somebody. Yeah, after that teams, egg they laid uh, last lately. night. Yeah, the great Bassett Hound. Uh, we'll hear from him later. Another guy who seems like he's tired of the New York media after one season uh, being here. Garrett Cole tonight at Fenway for the Yankees, Scotty. Coming off the two out of three win at home over the raising over the weekend. Have to beat up on the Sox. We know they're always good games. Cole, six and a half tonight. Minus 145 to the over, plus 100 to the under. He's over, only over in two of his last five. Now, they were good ones. He had 14 last time out against Minnesota. Had an 11 in there against the A's, too. He's faced the Sox three times this year. 12, 7, and 3, which was opening day. Over for me tonight for Cole, Scotty. Yeah, I think he's somewhere in the 8 to 10 range. 14, the last game out, was dominant. He's getting better as we head toward the finish line and into October. And I think that's exactly what they need and he needs to be tuned up for October. I say he has a big game tonight. I have another fat piece going on Cole and the Yankees on PharrellOnTheBench.com today. So I need Ace Ventura to come up big. And to get there, I'm going to ride with you on this puppy. Next, let's go out to uh, Arizona where the Dodgers will be tonight, Scotty. Kershaw faces the Diamondbacks. Five and a half for him tonight. Now, he's made two starts since coming off the injured list. By the way, minus 145 to the over, plus 100 to the under. He's made two starts since coming back off the injury list. He had eight and six in both of those starts. Like him tonight against the Diamondbacks, over five and a half, minus 145. I know what you're doing to me here. You're going to give me both sides of this game, and I'm going to take the over in both of them. I'll save you a lot of time. I'm with you on the over here with Kershaw, and now I know you're going to go Merrill Lynch. Well, I always, when he's on the mound, even though there were so many great aces going tonight, this guy's been too good to us. Five and a half again for Kelly tonight. Minus 105 to the over. I mean, let's be fair. He's uh, over seven of his last nine starts. He's gone over five and a half. Has some good numbers against the Dodgers, too. Let's hope that Merrill Lynch Kelly uh, catches another one for us, Scotty. As the uh, legendary gambling Kenny would say, hit me. Give me another one. Give me one, Carver. Let's go. Give it to give me. Give me another give one. Me. Give me give another me one. Just give me the over. Give let's me the go. over. Let's go. Give him the over right there. Uh, tater time. On the lion's share, and we will once again go back to Fenway Park for the Yankees oh, no. and the Red Sox. And oh, why no. are we going to do that? Now, look, you like cashing tickets, right, Scotty? I know you don't oh. like rooting for the Red Sox. Do you like cashing tickets? Raphael Devers against Garrett Cole, 8 for 28 with six home runs. Six of his eight hits off of Cole have left the yard. Plus 350 for him tonight. Hey, Yankees will win. We could give up a Devers homer, Scotty. Come on. <laughs> you know he's going to hit one. I'm not even going to yeah. question that. That's coming. I just hope it's early and not late. Early on, I'll give him his solo or two-run shot. I need the Yankees to score 10 runs tonight for once in their effing lives. I need him to hit this bet for me. I'll give you Devers because you know he's going to do it. Every time he faces uh, Ace, he hits one out. Well, we will stay in Fenway because on the other side, we have some very juicy numbers as well against Nick Pavetta, who's starting for the Sox. Giancarlo Stanton 
starting to maybe hit the long ball and being healthy, Scotty? Well, against Pavetta, 8 for 20 with three home runs. Really good history. Who else? Donaldson has three homers off Pavetta in his career, too. We'll go Stanton plus 260. Boom, I'm on it. And, I mean, if you're sprinkling the sea salt, I'll do uh, Josh as well. Uh, give me a judge, too, on the uh, offering. I mean, you can see uh, he'll be six away with this one. Judge has one homer off Pavetta. I uh, went with the other guys who had three homers off him. The Yankees hit Pavetta very well, uh, so that should get, may, be good fortune for them tonight. Now, Trout doesn't have history against Morris, who's starting for Cleveland tonight. But, Scotty, the guy's got a homer in seven straight games. They've brought it down to plus 170. I know we're jumping on the carpet here probably a little too late, but we'll go to Trout plus 170 tonight. I mean, how can you not get a piece on him the way he's hitting uh, home runs every single night? I mean, it's incredible. It's always the same story with that team, right? It's Trout, Otani, and no one else ever does a thing. Nobody else ever does a thing, that's for sure. Next, I know you always love when I pull Sean Murphy of the Oakland A's out for the lion's share. I had to tonight at plus 370. He's facing Reagans from the Rangers Two for two off of Reagan's two home runs. <laughs> Faced him twice. He's homered both times off him. Plus 370 for the Murph, man. Here we go again. Everybody knows a guy named Murph. I'm not going there tonight <laughs> with you. I'm sure, you'll probably, I'm sure you'll probably hit the bet, though, when you pull these out of your arse. Well, and I got one more for you. Now, I couldn't get a number for it because it's the second game of the doubleheader between the Jays and the Rays. There'll probably be a number on it soon if he's in the is lineup. It my guy? If he's not, it's Teoscar Hernandez. The Teoscar ag- against Chirinos, six for ten and two home runs in his yes. career against Chirinos, who's starting for the Rays tonight. We like Teoscar Hernandez. I don't care what the number is uh, once they put it up and we make sure he's in the lineup for game number two. Uh, game props for you, Scotty. Yankees win tonight in Fenway. Over seven and a half runs scored in the game, plus 165. Boom. Boom. Next, Dodgers win in the desert against Arizona. The good pitching matchup. Merrill Kelly, Clayton Kershaw. Dodgers win under seven and a half, plus 225. Boom, baby. I'm doing that too. I like what I'm hearing so far. There you go. And finally, we always like to go big ball with one game for both teams to score a lot of runs. I'm going to go to Chicago for that tonight. The White Sox and the Rockies, both teams to score four or more more at plus 220 for you tonight. So let me get this straight. All right, so I'm on the White Sox (laughs) and Rockies, and, and you need both teams to do what? Both teams to score four runs or more, plus 220. A lot of runs tonight. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not Copic feeling Copic and the Chad, you're so cool. Road. You got Chad, you're so cool going against Copic. Going to be a lot of runs. Yeah. I'm feeling I, runs. I, well, look, I actually think the, the White Sox might score the runs and not the uh, Rockies. I'm going to say no. Okay, there you go. But at least I got you on the other two. So there you go. The Lions share. Brought to you by BetMGM. Lots of strikeouts, lots of taters, lots of sea salt at Fenway Park tonight. Could be a lot of runs. I got to tell you, I got uh, just this horrible itch last night on Strider. He didn't get it done either against uh, Seattle. And today I saw all the stories about the Mariners, that their playoff drought is ending, and that they're going to be one of the most dangerous postseason teams before it starts. Are you buying that? Or selling that, that they're going to be a hard out. I'm buying it. I do not want to face them uh, right now. I think I saw something like plus 350 or plus 400 to win the American League uh, and go to the World Series. I, I think that I'm there. They could. I think they could definitely beat the Yankees, and I think they could maybe beat the Astros uh, if that pitching is lined up correctly. They and then we get the soul man on the show uh, during yes. the playoffs. We'll get him on yes. from Seattle. There you go. The Lion's Share, presented by BetMGM. MGM. 
Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. In the landscape of college sports, some things remain the same. College the football today. Alabama in winning SEC champion. It's the Island of Misfit Tour. Fantasy sports so today. You have to understand that. $4 word. gap between them and Kansas City. Pro football so them today. Two when this happened to this franchise, they are comical. Now, I'm not making light of the injury. This is a brutal rash of in injury. Game line, but you all take the points. Access. You can take the money line. And the sports book, if you shop around, you can get it at 133. But um, that's my best bet on the night, Joe. So that's the one I'm going big. In game do. live, prime time. I'm going a bit nostalgic. I'm going with an international, Jason Day and Sergio Garcia. But boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge only on Sports Grid, your 24/7 sports wagering network. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Pharrell, coast to coast. There's a saying around coaches who run the National Football League when it comes to backup quarterbacks. The longer they play, the more they look like backups. Two, three, maybe four games you get away with it. But the longer they play, the more they look like backups. And the funny thing with the Cowboys, Pharrell, is they don't even have another quarterback on the roster. Dak will go into injured reserve. And then Cooper Rush will be the starter. And they're going to have to add at least one more quarterback, if not another. But th- this crushes them. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. All right, Justin Jefferson broke his uh, career record for receiving yards. He had over 150 for the Vikings at the half. This is why we tell you, just draft wide receivers earlier and figure it out at running back later. You know, take Jamal Williams and Cordarrelle Patterson, because guess what? Look at look at all these names here at, at the top of wide receiver. Justin Jefferson, first-round pick. Cooper Cup, first-round pick. Devontae Adams, first-round pick. Jamar Chase, first-round pick. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. The Giants beat the Titans 21 to 20 with a late decision to go for two, three, and O oh for the other three teams here in the NFC East. My question to you: Who had the most impressive Week One victory of this bunch? Thoroughly impressed by the New York Giants and going down double digits at the half. It looked like one of those games, Kevin, where we said to ourselves, "Man, Daniel Jones might not even." And I joked before the season, like he might get pulled, like week only two. on Sports Grid. All right, it's a pleasure to have Greg Sharp, the legendary voice of the uh, incredible Nebraska Cornhusker football program on Coast to Coast today. And I say that with all due respect, Greg. I'm 57 years old and I saw a lot of national championships uh, with Tom Osborne. I respect him, uh, you know, like no other. Uh, I'm a Miami fan. I have been a Kane fan for 50 years. And uh, the battles, uh, you know what happened. You know the deal. Uh, It doesn't get any better than uh, those type of rivalries in the history of college football. It is stunning to me what has happened to Nebraska football since they left, honestly, for me, the big eight and, and you know, the, the big 12, and now it's a bloodletting with that conference. And thank God they're not in it anymore and that they're in the big 10. But for me, Greg, the problem started then. Uh, I never, I couldn't even fathom the day that they left for the big 10. I was like, what is happening here? Nebraska football is going to the big 10. I didn't like it then, Greg. I still don't like it, though I understand it from a fiscal standpoint that it's the smart move. I want to get your reaction to that before I start talking about what happened to Scott and what Trev is dealing with and what's going on in Lincoln. Because the program was so incredible for my entire life. I never thought I'd see the day that this is happening to Nebraska football, to be perfectly frank with you. 
Yeah, Scott, good to be with you. I, you know, I think it, it oversimplifies it to say that the troubles just lie with the conference move. I think it goes deeper than that for Nebraska. They've just made some some ill-advised hires over the last couple of decades. I think Bo Pelini did a pretty nice job in his run here. He won at least nine games all seven seasons that he was in Lincoln. But I think the Mike Riley hire set the program back. Uh, there's a sadness in Lincoln this week because everybody was convinced Scott Frost was going to work. He was the 87 coming back. He was the pick of the litter at the end of that 2017 season, and it didn't work. I think Scott made some strides. Nebraska certainly has been competitive in every game they've played over the last two years. But, yeah, it's it's certainly been a rough at least decade for Husker football. The Huskers did make some conference championship games under Pelini, but the last eight, nine years have been pretty rough. When you think of Osborne and his greatness uh, and, and what he built there, uh, I got to tell you, you talk about Pelini, uh, you, you said it best. He won a lot of games and boy, they treated him like he didn't win ever. I mean, they honestly treated that guy like a, like a criminal. Uh, if you ask me the way he went out, uh, they have, like, it's like they rue the day they did it. It's gotten worse since. What is Osborne? Is, I know he's distant from it all. He doesn't want to have anything to do with it. Is that true? Or is, has he been uh, vocal about their problems? No, I think he was totally on board with the Frost hire. I mean, Scott played for, for Tom, was recruited by Tom here. I think he was all on board on that. And I think very supportive of Scott. It just didn't work for whatever reason. I mean, the, the string of close losses, Scott, is really hard to explain, right? I mean, last right. year, they, every game they lose, minus the Ohio State game was by a, a score or less, and they lost to the Buckeyes by, by nine points. So they were in every game, just couldn't find a way to win, and there's something, to me at least, that means you, you're doing something wrong. Something's wrong with your systems or your culture to not win those close games week after week after week. But no coach is still around. He still advises – the athletic department, and certainly another guy that he he coached is now running this department, and Trev Alberts, a guy that you referenced earlier. So you've, uh, I'm assuming, have done the show with Scott now for five years. Uh, what was it like? Uh, let's say, just take me back to when the problem started, let's say last year with all the close losses. When you were dealing with him on a weekly basis doing the show, could you – I mean, you had to feel terrible for the guy. Did you sense the stress uh, of it all? Because I've heard the guy say, you know, the media, I can't let it seep into my players' heads. I can't let them near uh, the kids because they are a, a talented, positive group. They want to win. They want to fight. They want to play hard. I got them in the right frame of mind. It's the media. When did you see him at, at any point, Greg, did he start to uh, show cracks and, and start – that you sensed the stress was getting to him? No, I think he's felt it almost the entire four plus years that he was a coach. He feels the weight of the world on his shoulders. I mean, this is a guy that grew up in this state. This is a young man who came to Nebraska after skipping a year out at Stanford and then coming back home to quarterback the Huskers to that 97 national championship, championship team. So I think he felt that weight all along. And then the losses started to pile up and the narrow defeats and the question of what did we do this week to not cover this game up? And it was something, Scott, it was something different really every week. It was a kicking game error one week. It was a turnover right. by the offense another week. It was a blown assignment by the defense. Maybe it was a coaching decision, onside kick. I know that will come to mind to you because of that. He did it in the yeah. game in Ireland a few weeks ago against Northwestern. It was something like that every week. It was almost like they were inventing a new way to lose week after week. But I think Scott felt the pressure almost from the moment he stepped back on campus to take over the program. Wow. Uh, you know what he reminds me of? I'm just going to throw this out there and tell me I'm crazy. He reminds me of Steve Alford. Steve Alford never went back to Indiana. He, he was a guy that everyone thought was going to replace Bob Knight, and he was going to go back, the, the favorite son from the state, Mr. Basketball, won a national championship, beat Syracuse, got it done, beat UNLV. Then he went and coached at Iowa, for Christ's sakes. Then he went out west to what, New Mexico or something? And then he ended up in Reno at Nevada 
living in the mountains uh, at Tahoe coaching, and he's got like a lifetime contract. The pressure of being the guy that has to go home with a program as big as Indiana basketball or as big as Nebraska football, those are very big pants to put on. You need a really good leather belt, Greg. Do you think that all caught up with him and maybe he should have gone a different direction in life coaching? Have you ever thought that? Because I'm sure you feel bad for the guy. I, I'm, I'm certain you like him. Scott, you wonder if, if, because go back to that December of 2017, Florida was open and he's down there in Orlando at UCF. And I know the Gators pursued Scott. I think Tennessee even went after him or at least made some phone calls. He had some options in 2017. And I had not thought of the offered comparison before, but I have made the comparison between Indiana basketball and Nebraska football. I think there's a lot of parallels. It's been a several decades since Really, either one has been on a national stage. Indiana's had some decent teams, made the tournament, but they really haven't had a deep run. I know Mike Davis took the one team to the Final Four, but it has not really been very smooth sailing. And that program dominates that university in that state like Nebraska football does in this state. So I've made that same comparison with Indiana hoops and Nebraska football. I hadn't thought about the Alford one, but you wonder if Scott Frost here sitting today is going, man, what would have happened? If I'd have taken that Gators job in 2017 instead of coming here. And you think back, Scott, that 2017 football class of hires has really flamed out because Mullen got hired at Florida. He's already gone. Pruitt got hired at Tennessee. He's long gone. Jimbo yeah. Fisher's at yeah. A&M. Might be on some thin ice at A&M after last weekend as well. <laughs> hey, you got that right, Greg. Hey, so uh, let me ask you, uh, what were they thinking? Have you gotten any kind of feel for their, I, I, I mean, I understand you lose to Georgia Southern and, and there was probably just a lot of stress and you couldn't even enjoy your dinner, couldn't even have a cocktail, couldn't have an appetizer. You got a lot of stress and people mad or angry, you know, get rid of the coach, but they had a, you know, the story, the buyout, you give him 15 million to fly out of town on a, a parachute uh, a paraglider, basically a $15 million paraglider where they could have sent him out a window in a parachute for 7 million. Uh, they obviously, I mean, in most people's eyes, they must not care about money because they must have a lot of it to, to pay that kind of money to get rid of a guy that just, it was inevitable. They were going to fire him. Isn't that something? Seven and a half million dollars. I don't know if you follow Joe Mowgli on Twitter, Joe, is the current athletic director of Coastal Carolina, used to be the CEO of TD Ameritrade, and then at age 50 wanted to be a college football coach, and then ended up being – he's tweeted about this in the last 24 hours about, wait a minute, you could have waited 20 more days and saved yourself $7.5 million. Where, where are right. we at in college right. sports to not just right. do that and let this right. play out for three more weeks? But I think the feeling was there's nine games left in this year. I think Scott had some resignation even in his body language after the game – Saturday, and I think Trev saw that and thought, you know what, may, now may be the time. Plus, Scott, here, and this may be the biggest card in Trev's back pocket, Fox is here with their big national pregame show on Saturday. They're, the big noon kickoff is Nebraska-Oklahoma this Saturday. They're going to do right. two hours of pregame here in Lincoln, Nebraska, on the campus with Urban Meyer sitting on that set. And I think Trev wanted to, the narrative to not be, boy, Scott Frost's seat is really hot, but flip the narrative and say, Nebraska's in the market. Let's talk about where they go from here. Where do they go, Greg? You're the insider. Uh, what would you do? I mean, they got a real problem they got to fix. And, it, you know, this decision has to be lock, stock, and barrel for let's lock it in for five years. We can't have any more of this fire a coach every other day. It's just making Nebraska look silly. We got 75 days, Scott, I think, to figure that out, right? And I think 75 days are going to be a lot of twists and turns because there might be some names right now on Trev's radar that their teams don't have a good year. And so you may have to take them off over the coming weeks, depending on how their seasons go at school X, Y, or Z. So I, I think it's way too early to, to pinpoint a name. I think you got to let this season play itself out. I don't anticipate Nebraska making it higher until that first week of December. So we're 
We're a long ways away from that. Trev, though, certainly is well-connected in the college football community going back to his days at ESPN and his, his announcing abilities there. I think he will kick a lot of tires between now and early December. Is everybody okay in Lincoln? Like they're, <laughs> you know, you got to – I want to make sure everybody's okay because you got a big game. You hate the Sooners. Who doesn't? They're coming to Lincoln. Can we still have fun? Is there a way for everyone to have a beer and be happy? Or is everyone just so miserable? It's Black Cloud Diner City. Everyone has time for a beer, Scott. Uh, They're sad. (laughs) They're just sad because this was supposed to work, right? This was when this happened five years ago, everybody was on board. Unlike the Mike Riley hire, everybody was on board for this one. This was supposed to work. But nine games to go. And Scott, as I looked out my window Saturday night in that press box, that stadium was still full, 90,000 strong, wearing their red. Yep, they had dropped their pom-poms by the end of the game. But the fan support for this program is still really, really high. And that's what I think still makes it a fairly attractive job. That, and there's a pretty big pocketbook here to try to get this thing right. You'll probably spank my Hoosiers in two weeks and everything will be back to normal. And then you'll go beat Rutgers and you'll start winning again and everybody will be happy. Then Thanksgiving will roll around and then Christmas and everybody will be fine. Hey, you're awesome calling the games. I'm sorry you're having to deal with all this uh, at the beginning of the college football season. What a nightmare, but uh, what a storied tradition. What an incredible uh, football school that it's always been. I'm certain they'll build it back up. I feel bad for Scott. You know, uh, my friend Tim Brando said it uh, many times to me. He's going to win a national championship and multiple Big Ten titles in Lincoln, and it never happened. Greg, thank you so very much. Great stuff today. racing the clock's running out it all comes down to this we're talking pre-game 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 get locked in with game time decisions your hosts gabe marinci and cam stewart will get you ready for game time everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the Pro Football Doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Got this victory last year over Ball State, 44 to 13. The potential look ahead against Auburn, I don't think it happens. They are 33 and 7 straight up. They 40 yard line six times. Yep. Now that amounting to three points is unforgivable, but they did move the ball. I know it's dangerous to say this, but I'm still going to say it. It can't be that bad again. It just can't. Only on Sports Grid, the morning after. I expect it to be run heavy for Seattle, trying to keep this game ugly, trying to keep this game under that total. His rushing attempts prop tonight is 15 and a half. In four of the final five games last year for Seattle, Rashad Penny went over this number of 15 and a half. In the final two games, he had 25 carries and then 23 in the finale against Arizona. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. They might not win six games with Drew Pine as the quarterback. That's how bad. Will they is. cover against Cal? I don't know. I doubt it. I, I, here's the problem. I haven't seen in two games now the offense do anything that makes you think that they're going to put points on the board. Even, I mean, Cal should have better athletes than Marshall, right? I mean, Cal should have come, even though Cal sucks in the Pac-12. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. I'm also feeling really good to have Saquon Barkley. My gosh, what a debut for him yesterday against the Tennessee Titans. Outplayed his counterpart by far. 
in Derrick Henry, who had a quiet game. Barkley had over 160 yards, also six receptions and a touchdown. Monster game for Saquon out of the box. Uh, Jonathan Taylor, as always, had a big game for him to start in that wild finish between Houston and Indianapolis. 160 uh, there. The Sports Grid Network. It's time for Today in Carver High History. All right, here we go. 1965, Willie Mays hits his 500th career home run, 81. John McEnroe wins his third straight U.S. Open, beating Bjorn Borg in his last Grand Slam match. 82, Steve Carlton throws a complete game shutout, then hits a home run for the fourth time in his career. Only pitcher to do so in three different decades. 83, Ricky Henderson gets his third straight season of 100 stolen bases. 87, Martina Navratilova defends her U.S. Open title. 89, Faye Vincent is elected to be the commissioner of Major League Baseball. 91, Joe Carter, first player with three consecutive 100 RBI seasons with three different teams. 92 for the first time in NFL history. Neither team punts. Jim Kelly and Steve Young both throw for more than 400 yards. Bills beat the Niners 34-31. I remember that game as a 12-year-old. 2008, Angels pitcher Francisco Rodriguez records his 58th save. 2010, Nadal wins his first U.S. Open. He beat the Joker. 2011, Mariano Rivera becomes the second pitcher in MLB history to record 600 saves. 2015, Moses Malone passed away of heart disease. 2015 also, Joker beat Federer to win the U.S. Open. Third man to reach the finals in all four Grand Slams the same year. 2018, first all-female broadcast booth. Andrea Kramer, Hannah Stone for Thursday Night Football. Uh, 2020, Dominic Team becomes the first player in 70 years to be two sets down and recover to win the Open. And in 2020, Alec Mills, who... Throws a no-hitter against the Brewers and only his 15th start. We got that for you. Up the got middle. Baez has it. It's a no-hitter. The former. There you go. There you go. Uh, all I want to say is uh, Moses Malone was a badass. And if Moses yes. Malone was in the lead for the MVP the entire <laughs> season, was- scoring 30 a game. <laughs> He would have closed the deal and won the MVP. Unlike yeah. JoJo Gurley man, who couldn't close yeah. the deal when I was sitting on a 300 grander. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot, JoJo Cena. Yeah.